hello everyone so today i am going to introduce you uh, to the dynamic mesh component and geometry script plugin so the reason that i'm doing this is recently we worked on this world generation system and here we generate the landscape using procedural mesh component and i got some suggestions from various people that dynamic mesh is more performant compared to procedural mesh components so we are going to find out so but before we get started with this we need to know the basics of dynamic mesh components so i'm going to introduce you to do this uh, plugin and do some simple operations in that so after that hopefully we would have a better understanding on how to approach creating dynamically generated worlds with the dynamic mesh component all right so first we need to enable this geometry script plugin even without this dynamic mesh component is available for us to add in blueprints but when we have this we have some advanced features so once i enable the plugin i have to restart the engine all right this is what i got Let's go to a basic map and here I'll create a new folder BP, and I'm going to create a new actor based on dynamic mesh actor here BP dynamic mesh now let me open this so once I open it I have this dynamic mesh component already added here but we don't have anything here so even if I drag and drop it into the level we don't have anything and if I refer to the documentation here we have this on rebuild generated mesh so this is a major function that we need to use in order to manipulate or create dynamic meshes so here that's the event on rebuilt generated mesh event on rebuilt oh wait we should have used this generated dynamic mesh act <laughs> once we start we made a mistake but that's fine we can change this generated dynamic mesh act okay now we should have that on rebuild here yeah, here we go note that in case you missed this is now a child class of generated dynamic mesh not dynamic mesh actor okay now here if we want to add a mesh we can use this append so we have a lot of stuff append bounding box append box append cone regular shapes so i'll choose this append cylinder so here we can give a transform but i'll leave default values so it will be in the origin of the actor radius 50 height 100 radial steps height steps let me make two or three compile now you see we already have it so if i enable the wireframe mode here you see i defined steps here the height steps three one two three i guess these vertices are based on that and we have vertices around here as well which defined by this radial steps and radius and height you already understand that okay now if i just did this and compile it's no longer there and similar way let me append a plane this rectangle xy that's a plane so target mesh you have to use this and dimension 100 let me make it thousand thousand steps so this will define the number of second vertices in x and y i'll make it 40 by 40 and primitive options if you make 
here you see polygroup mode flip orientation uv mode those things feel free to play play with them if i compile now we got a plane now uh, here if i add uh, noise here we can add perlin noise and compile now you see there are some noise on this plane okay now let's explore some more options here so other than pearly noise here we should have some other deformation options as well here you can see all of them apply bend wrap apply displays from per vertex vectors a lot of stuff are there okay now let's see how these options work let's make geometry script perlin noise options so here apply along normal we can enable or disable that and base layer let's look a bit into that let's make base layer okay here you have magnitude frequency frequency shift random seed right so if i increase the magnitude you should see larger deformations on the noise like this see and if you change this frequency let's make it five i think if i increase this we should have more fine grain details uh let me have a wireframe mode okay if i decrease it let's see what happens yeah see we barely see any change so yeah as i increase the noise we do get more noise more small scale noise like this okay now if i make this large instead of thousand i'll make it ten thousand ten thousand steps thousand compile now we have a larger more like a landscape let me go to the lead mode okay here if i sign this mesh uh, material yeah, it's more clear now okay so now if i add another layer of this pallet noise let me duplicate this let me reduce this size a little bit because when i keep this uh, this is i disconnected this because when I keep it connected and when I try to make changes, I think it's trying to update in the real time. Yeah, so it's a bit, it becomes a bit laggy. So what I wanted to do is if I add two layers of pearly noise with two different frequencies here, we should now be able to get more like mountains. So I'll make this magnitude 500 and here we were using frequency. 0.1 if I make it 0 0.01 and make sure to connect this target mesh oh we got something like this which is not exactly what I expected but uh, now you see still you see the noise is applied and in the wireframe mode you can see some weird mesh okay now let me disconnect this and now let's make a spear append spear spear box spear lat long let's choose the first one whatever that is and here radius so I just 500 or 1000 steps 6 by 6 10 by 10 by 10 compile okay now we got a spear right now to this spear as well we can add curling noise do we see any difference did i connect it yeah correctly yeah if i go to the wireframe mode 
here yeah, just like before if I apply some magnitude and compare now you see deformations on this sphere so more like a natural planet maybe with high mountains okay now here you see let me show you something else so what if we want to increase details of only one section so perhaps if we are implementing something like a LOD system where we go closer to a one particular tile in a planet we may need to increase the details of only that part so to do something like this we like that we can use this uh, here we have this selection so let's make geometry script mesh selection oh no that doesn't seem useful here oh let's try select oh select mesh elements in a box oh now we can make a selection from this mesh and give the selection here so we can define a box let me split this box mean box max so here i am defining a box with the radius of thousand and it's star uh, the origin is the root of this actor so therefore if i want to select only the let's say upper hemisphere we can do something like this minimum is thousand minus thousand x and minus thousand y maximum is thousand x thousand y thousand z now this would select only the upper hemisphere and here if I apply per Perlin noise only for the upper hemisphere now you see we have a perfect sphere below and a deformed sphere in the top side see we don't have any imperfections downside okay now I said if we want to do a loading increase level of detail if I go to the Wi-Fi remote no everything is selected I think I should do another selection oh wait this is not actually using any selection so tessellation apply selective tessellation yeah here we can give a selection then tessellation level if I make it 3 we should see a higher poly count ah right see we have a higher poly count in the top side so if we change our selection to only one of the tiles of this surface then we can increase the tessellation or poly count of that tile only but that's not something we should look into today now let's apply Perlin noise to the top side but I'm not sure this selection would work now because there are additional triangles here after applying the tessellation so I think we may have to have a different selection but anyway let's see what happens yeah see it's not working as expected so we may have to do another selection for that we can use the same select node which is this one and now we have a new selection here and put the target mesh like this now compare see now you see we have a deformed surface on the top side with the higher poly count and bottom a low poly count sphere without any deformation see okay so yeah those are the things you can do with this dynamic mesh so to test if this is working in runtime let's do a simple test here i'll add a variable generate by default it has to be false and here i'll add a branch and only if this generate is true mesh will be generated now if i compile you don't see anything here okay so 
here in the begin play I'll add a delay of two seconds and then set generate to true and then mark for generate it's rebuild mark for rebuild mark for mesh rebuild I'll uh, make this enable I don't think we need to do this but anyway let's do that too now here you don't have anything if I simulate so this is actually the flow let me move up the dynamic mesh and play now yeah it's generated so everything is working in runtime nice okay so I hope you get a good understanding a uh, basic understanding on what this uh, dynamic mesh is and what are the use cases of that so I hope to do some cool stuff with this new component perhaps integrate this into the world generation system and always thanks for watching let's see what else we can do with this in future episodes so see you in another episode and I would like to remind you as always you can download the project files of all thousands of projects that I have done in my channel from my patron page feel free to check it out that would help me to continue what I do in my channel and see you in another episode goodbye